All right, what body system are we learning about today? We are obviously not getting through all the systems. Today we're learning about organs. Okay, um, organs and organ systems. So an organ is a group of tissues working together to perform a similar function. So we learned about the tissues, and who can remember the four types of tissues we learned about? I heard somebody say it, please. I kind of. What, what do those fall under, though? There's a type of tissue those all fall under. Muscle, okay, that's one type of tissue. What are the other three? Nervous is another. What are the other two? Connective. Connective. What's the last one? Epithelial. There we go. So those are the four types of tissues. A group of tissues working together to perform a similar function is called an organ. And then you take that a step up, a group of organs working together to perform a similar function is called an organ system. So we have organ systems in our body and depending on what the internet tells you or who you ask, there are different numbers of organ systems. Organ systems, um, in our body, I teach 11. Now, some times the internet may tell you there are 12, Sometimes the internet may tell you there are 10, but I always teach 11. And the reason you might get different answers is because endocrine versus exocrine, or sometimes they split like the male and the female reproductive system into two. Um, so that's kind of where the variation is. But for our purposes, I always teach 11 body systems. If you take anatomy with me next year, we learn 11 body systems. Physiology, 11 body systems. Um, we also kind of do the um, special like sensory organs like the eye, sense of smell, sense of hearing. That's kind of in a different group, but that's not a system. So collectively, the organ systems of a multicellular body demonstrate a division of labor. Each thing, each, each organ system allows our body to focus on something different. Our muscles focus on movement. Our bones focus on structure. Our digestive system focuses on absorbing nutrients. This division of labor allows our body to overall function as one unit. Um, it's kind of like the cell has different parts that allow the cell to um, split up the work and the way a job has different people to split up the work, our body has different organ systems to split up the work.
this shows the division of the cavities of the body. Again, all of this stuff we're going to get into a lot more if you take anatomy. Um, there's the cranial cavity, the thoracic cavity, and this is actually called the abdominal pelvic cavity. We've got the <coughs> abdominal and then the pelvic and then combined together for the abdominal pelvic. And so our body can actually be divided into these different cavity systems. We can also divide the body up into directional terms. These are really helpful when you're dissecting. You can make a transverse cut or an anterior or a mid-sagittal. Um, sometimes the, this is called a frontal. The frontal, if you think of, um, oh, a frontal would be like if you're shaving down, like if you shave off a piece of skin, that'd be like a frontal cut. A transverse is also known as a cross section. And then a mid-sagittal is if you're cutting it in half, like down the long way. The reason it's called a mid-sagittal is if it's directly in the middle. If it was any kind of cut that wasn't directly in the middle, it would just be called a sagittal cut. And this would actually make a really good question for the test. So this might be a good one to remember is the different kinds of cuts. Now this is actually different for a four-legged versus a two-legged organism. Same with dorsal versus ventral. Dorsal means toward the back, ventral means toward the stomach. Anterior and posterior are also different for a four-legged versus a two-legged individual. Anterior means toward the head, posterior means toward the tail. However, if you put the person upright on two legs, then anterior and, um, anterior and ventral kind of mean the same thing, and dorsal and posterior kind of mean the same thing. So anterior and ventral both mean toward the stomach or the front, and posterior and dorsal both mean toward the back. So it's a little bit different when they're bipedal, and it's a little bit different when they're on four legs. So these are the 11 body systems that we have. This picture is included in Google Classroom. Um, so we've got integumentary, and I'm going based on the pictures because I'm sitting back here and I can't really see them. So if I say them wrong, I'm sorry. Um, integumentary, nervous system, muscular, this is skeletal, um, cardiovascular, and I think this one's excretory. It's hard to see from back here. Endocrine? Yeah. Okay, endocrine. Um, lymphatic, yes? yes. Yeah. yeah. Respiratory? Yeah. That one I can't see. What's that one? Digestive? 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 Reproductive? No, this one's reproductive. There's a male and female. That one's excretory. Urinary. Yeah? Urinary. Urinary and excretory are the same thing. Um, so... They, it used to be called urinary, but excretory is the more acceptable word now. A lot of these have changed from a more like common term to a more scientific term. Urinary is not wrong, but excretory is the more acceptable term, and that's what I use more in my anatomy and physiology classes is excretory. But urinary is not incorrect. It's just kind of the older usage of the term. All right, so functions of the skin. Um, you should all know these because I made you write a paper about these. Skin protects, controls the temperature, um, detection on, of shifts of external conditions, makes vitamin D and used for defense. So all of these things are important for the skin. Now the defense isn't so much for humans as it is more for other animals. Think like a porcupine uses its skin for defense. Think more of a... Oh, um, a, a snake that would have hard scales that uses it for protection and defense. Other animals will use their skin more for defense than we do. Because again, this is a biology class and not necessarily a human anatomy class. So we're going to focus on the bigger picture of how all animals and organisms use their skin, not just humans. But we do use our skin to make vitamin D, and it does have a huge amount of nerve endings to help us detect our environment. Um, it does control our internal environment and keep the good stuff in and the bad stuff out for the most part. And it is used to protect us from bacteria and viruses and things like that.
So within the skin, there are actually two layers. There's a dermis and an epidermis. Some people believe that there is a third layer called the hypodermis. Um, the hypodermis isn't technically part of the skin. Just the dermis and the epidermis are the skin layers. Um, dermis is dense connective tissue. It's got fibers in it. It's got blood vessels and lymph nodes. Uh, it's got sensory receptors, oil and sweat glands, hair follicles. There's a lot going on in the dermis. Now the epidermis is mostly, this is stratified squamous epithelium. Here's that epithelium type of tissue we learned about the other day. And stratified means multiple layers. Squamous means flattened. So that's how we name the epithelium. So flattened, multiple layers of epithelium. Um, keratinocytes, that is hardened. So they are, and anything that ends in site means a cell. So really with a lot of these kind of words, it's really about breaking them down. You can also take an online class called medical terminology. There's not a lot of classes in the medical field I would really recommend taking online. Medical terminology is one you could kind of maybe get away with taking online. I don't recommend a lot, and even then I don't really recommend medical terminology, but you can kind of maybe get away with taking medical terminology online because it's learning words like site means cell and things like that. So melanocyte, melanin means dark and site means cell. That's what medical terminology would teach you. Anyways, um, at the very surface of the epidermis, you've got dead cells. So um, you know those dust particles that you like to breathe in, that you see floating in like the, the air and stuff? Have you ever seen those floating like in a sun ray? You know what that is? That's your skin. Most of that dust that you see floating in the yeah, that's skin. So what you're breathing in mostly, that's skin. So whenever you like just rub your arm like this, that skin has just floated off of me into the room. So you're welcome. Now you can all breathe my skin. So here's a picture of what skin looks like. You don't need to know all the parts. We'll get into this a lot more um, if you decide to take anatomy. So what it looks like under a microscope, pretty cool. All of this is the dermis down here. And then this is the epidermis up here. So this is all those flattened layers of squamos, stratified squamos. This is the dead layers of the skin. And this down here is the live layers of skin. So this is all alive. This is all dead. Have you ever taken a needle and like stuck it under the first layer of the skin? No. Yeah, and it doesn't hurt, does it? Because no. it's dead. Yeah. And it doesn't bleed because it's dead. So that's why it doesn't hurt and it doesn't bleed because it's dead. And that's what you're sticking it under is this layer right here. Now, if you poke it too far, then you bleed because uh, you get down to this, which is alive. What? This is really going to Liz, do you want to go say hi to people? <laughs> Diane's got you. But um, if you poke it too far, that's because you're getting down into here where it's still alive and it hurts and you got nerves down there. All right. Oh, look, that's all we, that's it? What? Do you 
you guys want to do more? No. no. Well, I guess you can. Use. Wait, we can do more. No, we need to work on our own. I know. Fine. 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 We can stop there. Okay. Yeah. Wait, could we get it done? Like the yeah, will we get the next one done? We can stop there. There is not like oh, so honestly, there's not a certain amount we have to get through. So it's not like we have to get through any certain amount. What we get through is what we'll do on the test. I'm still working on my paper. So we can stop there, and you guys.